All right, testing, testing. Okay, that seems to be working. Perfect. All right, testing, testing. Okay, that seems to be working. Okay, give it a minute to see who's popping on and then we will get started. All right, let me share my screen and then we will get going. So you all can see my slides. All right, hopefully you all can see that. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and get started because this is going to be a pretty decent amount of the hour that I planned. And then we will have questions at the end um, if anybody has them. <clears throat> so today we'll be speaking about all, all about your thoughts and your reality, how your thoughts create your reality and how you can ensure that you are creating the reality that you want. So today's live class will be all about your thoughts and your reality. And in this class, you are going to learn how your thoughts create your reality, ways to change those thoughts and those vibrations that are ultimately caused by those thoughts, and tips and tricks to get you out of the negative thought loop and back into a higher vibration. So everything and every being in life has a vibrational signature everything, literally. <laughs> have you ever met someone and you almost immediately just like click with them and you totally vibe and you have no idea why? Like you literally have never met this person in your life prior to that. More than likely because you were resonating at the same frequency as them and as such, it kind of draws you together. And so because of that, you are just like magnets. You can't not be drawn together. And this is how you meet some of your best friends sometimes. And we will also be learning about how thoughts are a very high level vibration. The higher the level, the more it can create. Hence why your thoughts can and do create the reality around you. All right, so on to who I am. For those of you who are not familiar with who I am, I'm Ayer Atla. I am a clinical herbalist, a naturopath, and a medical astrologist. So I've been working in this field for 10 plus years, um, professionally and even longer just for my own personal health reasons. Um, I love to teach people how they can stop fighting against their bodies and learn to live with them in harmony and increase their vitality and wellness in the process and reach their ultimate, their optimal health goals. So part of this is the mental and spiritual side as well as the physical side. So I work work with mindset transformations, spirituality transformations, and then health and wellness transformations that ultimately lead to you feeling more like you want to feel and ultimately getting to a point where you feel like you are much better, 100% better even than where you started and that you are given the tools in the process to continue living that way. So I am really honored that you have come here today to learn about this topic from me. And I am so excited to speak about this topic. It was really, really hard to condense it down into the like 50 plus slides that I have. Um, because I just really like to talk about this mindset transformations, which is ultimately what this is, are imperative for pretty much everything in life. 
and they're especially imperative if your goal is to get from where you are now to where you want to be. You have to have a mindset transformation or you will never make it there. If you stay in the mindset you are now, you will stay in the position you are now. So we're going to learn all about that today. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about my story and how I know so much about this and where I'm coming from. So the family I grew up in, super negative, energy draining family. If you've ever heard the term energy vampires, that is literally my family. They can suck the energy out of everything. Positive energy just disappears when you are around them. And it is so, so difficult to be in a situation like that, in an environment like that, right? Everything was absolutely always a draining negative experience. They would literally go looking for the negative in any situation. Even if something positive happened, they would go find the negative that might possibly happen as well. And so it just made it really, really hard growing up in that type of household and environment to really uh, thrive or to learn how to change my patterns so that I could live in a more positive manner while living in that house. So it was just very, very draining. And I didn't even realize how draining it was and how much it affected me until I moved out. And as soon as I moved out and I wasn't in that just absolute negative environment 24 seven, it was, life was so different. Like it was like a 180 degree difference. And I was like in shock. I had been taught that this world was full of hate and fear and terrible people. And everywhere you looked was some kind of negative experience waiting to happen and that you should be literally living your life just waiting for that bad thing to come, for the other shoe to drop, right? And actually, I found out it was none of those things. <laughs> There was no need to be fearful of everybody. There's no need to hate people for whatever made up reason that my family had. There was no reason for any of that. It was a wonderful, wonderful world that when you go looking for the good, you will find it. When you put out good, good comes back to you. When you are just living at your highest vibration, you will attract high vibration individuals and you will be surrounded by positivity and life will seem so much different. And that's exactly what happened. I just like my health improved, my mental health, my spiritual health, my physical health. I didn't realize how much it was truly hurting me living in that constant state of negativity and also just so stressful because of that, right? And when you live in a high stress environment, you live in a constant like fight and flight reaction. And that's just not good for your body. You're not made to live in that, you know, state forever. You're not made to live in a sympathetic nervous system state. You're made to live in a parasympathetic nervous system state. And so I just, yeah, it took me a couple of years probably to really get my feet under me and figure out my thing. But I realized that the universe wants me to be happy and healthy. The universe doesn't want me to live in fear or with constant anxiety and depression. And it was amazing how not only my everyday life changed, but my physical, mental, and spiritual life and health changed when I was completely free from that negative environment that I was in all the time. And so since then, I have been doing a lot of investigation, a lot of learning, a lot of transformation of my own. And that's what I'm bringing to you today. All the stuff that I have learned crammed together in like an hour long webinar. So <laughs> my entire life really changed for the better when I changed my thought pattern and I got into a higher vibration. And I really want that same thing for you today. So let's get on to it. Vibrations and how they work. So vibrations are actually the core of the law of attraction, and that is actually the law of vibrations. So this says that energy is everything and everything is energy. So light is energy. You are energy. The grass is energy. We are all made from energy. That is what the law of vibration says. And ultimately, it's the law of attraction that comes from that as well. And how does energy travel? It travels in waves, which is also known as vibrations. So even what appears to be a solid item or a solid being is actually particles that are constantly vibrating to keep that mass in its place. We can't usually see those vibrations and we can't usually hear those vibrations, but we know they exist. Science has actually proven this. So we know they're there. We just can't see them with our naked eye or hear them with our regular hearing. 
So thoughts and ideas are vibrations. Everything is actually vibrations. Everything on the earth is a vibration. And so we're going to talk about putting out those vibrations and what type of vibration you want to put out so that you get that type of vibration back and ultimately create the life that you want. So these vibrations can be either positive or negative. And as such, they either attract or repel positive or negative. So negative repels positive and attracts negative and positive repels negative and attracts positive. So we're going to learn how we can put out more positive vibrations so that we get more positivity back from it. So let's talk about your brain. The first thing we need to understand is that our brain is a supercomputer. It is actually a very amazing supercomputer that is completely wireless and it is capable of literally transforming everything. So it conducts billions of processes and propagate, propagates complex messages out into the world every day, every second of every day. This is what your brain is doing. It is so powerful that even if you have the mere thought of someone, then they will be calling you a few moments later. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that you think of, let's say, your best friend, and maybe later that day your best friend calls you and is like, hey, I was just thinking about you earlier and thought I'd give you a call. Um, most people would say, oh, that's a coincidence. But um, it's really not because there are no coincidences in this world. <laughs> there is only an organization of matter. So you literally created the phone call from that person when you thought about them and how they were doing. Has that ever happened to you? Have you been like literally thinking about somebody and then that has happened? It's so cool when that happens and like kind of freaky at the same time because you're like, um, <laughs> how did I do that? Well, that is how. Hang on. Can you guys still see me? I think we're having, let me just make sure. I feel like, oh, where did I go? Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure it, we had a, <laughs> yes, Jenny, yes. I did that with my sister today, actually. Oh, the email and the link wasn't working. Oh, okay. Well, it is a little late to fix that, but I will <laughs> double check uh, later. But yes, I did that with my sister day, actually. I was thinking about her and how I haven't talked to her in ages, and I really wanted to. And then, bam, she just like literally called me. So, all right, let's get back to the slides. All right, so as I was saying, there is literally no coincidences in the world. It's only an organization of matter, and you literally created that phone call, and you literally create the things that happen. So they may seem like a coincidence because there, you just feel like there's no way you could have done that, but you did, and you are more powerful than you realize. So how you organize your thoughts is how your life will organize in return. In this way, your thoughts literally will create your reality. So let's talk about the fact that there has been studies, because I know there's some of us that are like, well, this really can't be true. I want science to back it up. Well, you're in luck because science has. So there are actual studies that show this to be true. There was a particular one done that I read about a few years back that they were trying to see if your thoughts had any bearing on your health. And I believe it was done by the Cleveland Clinic, but honestly, it was years ago. And don't quote me on it. I could not find it again when I went looking for it, thanks to, you know, ADHD brain. So what they found, though, was that those who believed and thought they were healthy and that their bodies were capable of remaining that way and healing themselves were actually very healthy individuals. And they very rarely ever got sick. And then they found that the exact opposite was true, that those who believed that their bodies were sick, their bodies were incapable of healing themselves, that they would get sicker just because they were already sick, or that they would get sick easier, that they would, honestly, they found that they would actually just stay sick, and they had a very hard time healing no matter what modality they tried. And they were sick more often, and they took a longer time to recover. So your thoughts literally can transform everything about your life. So as you see, your thoughts really do create your reality, but just exactly how do they do that?
So let's talk about that. As mentioned earlier, your thoughts are at a very high vibration. The higher the vibration, the easier it is to create matter. Vibrations are literally capable of forming matter according to whatever their frequency is. And thoughts are a high frequency vibration. Therefore, your thoughts can actually cause your world to change around you. So your thoughts are actually more powerful than the words you say. And does this mean that your words don't matter? Of course not, <laughs> your words totally matter. What you speak out into the universe is also what you will get back. But it doesn't, they're not as high a vibration as your thoughts. So they don't create your reality as quickly as your thoughts do, but they are still definitely important. And how you speak to yourself, about yourself, about others, about your reality, about how you feel can literally change all of those things. So language is very powerful too. And what you say can affect your reality. So for example, you say, I can't fail. I can't fail at whatever it is. I am going to learn this new, really hard, you know, thing in college. I'm going to get a degree in it. And I just know I can't fail. I'm going to serve. I'm going to get this done. Have you said anything like that? You ever said these words? Like, I just know I can do this. I can't fail. And so I know many of you have, I have, I've been really guilty of this myself. So let's talk about why this is not the language you want to use for yourself. Your brain is literally incapable of thinking in a negative context. So words like can't, don't, won't, don't compute, right? So when you say something like that, vibrationally, you are telling your brain, I want to fail. So you're saying I can't fail and your brain is hearing, I can fail. I want to fail, I'm going to fail. So you're literally using the power of language against yourself. So you want to avoid using don't, can't, won't, things like that. And you want to avoid using words where the opposite of the word is what you actually mean. So like, for example, incredible. When you say, oh, I just have this incredible offer for you. What you're really saying is that you have a credible offer. You have a wonderful offer. So use those words instead. Incredible is very negative in the fact that it brings up that it's not credible. That's what your brain hears. Unbelievable the opposite of that is believable. So when you say it's an unbelievable offer, you're telling yourself, you're telling your audience, whoever's listening to you, that it's literally not believable and that you're giving them a bunch of hooey. So, and you're telling your brain that too, that this isn't going to work. It's unbelievable. So change how you talk to yourself and talk to others and you can change how your world reacts around you. So let's move on to how your negative, how to change your negative thoughts into positive ones. And this should be maybe more like your negative vibrational energy into a positive vibrational energy. So the key to changing your thoughts and getting what you want is to change your vibration. So if you're really in a negative vibration, how do you get yourself out and into a positive vibration so that you can get what you want and achieve your goals? So let's say, for example, you're vibrating on a worry and anxiety frequency. What you're going to attract then is worry and anxiety. And you need to put out what you want to get back. And I, before anybody else says it, because I've heard it before, this is not about toxic positivity. This is not about, oh, good vibes all the time and never have anything negative. That's not how this works. You can definitely be in a situation where you're like, you know what? This fucking sucks. This whole thing is terrible. I hate it. I hate this. I'm really upset right now. And you're allowed to have those moments. The key is just not to unpack and get stuck there. You don't want to get stuck in that vibration. It is definitely okay to put that vibration out there for a little bit because some situations truly do suck. And it's okay to acknowledge that. In fact, acknowledging the shitty situation, acknowledging the fact that you are in a negative thought pattern for a moment will actually help you move forward and out of that vibration. So the first thing you want to try to do is to reframe whatever situation is coming up. So it's one of the most simple ways is that every time a negative thought comes up in a situation is to just try to reframe it into a more positive situation it, while acknowledging that it is shitty and it sucks. So for example, you've not had a job for like, let's say three months and you've been searching everywhere and you have put in hundreds of applications. You've gone on 15 job interviews and you're not getting the job. 
And every time you hear back from someone saying, nope, 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 we're not accepting you. And you keep just saying, I'm never going to get a job. I'm just never going to get a job. You're literally putting out there that a job is never going to come to you. And that's exactly what's going to happen. You're never going to get a job or it's going to take you much longer to get a job. So try to reframe it to, well, I did not get that job or I didn't get these jobs, <laughs> depending on how many it's been, but I know a better one is coming. I know I am going to get a job. A job is coming to me. If you keep putting that out there, then you will get a job. It may not be quick still. This isn't one of those things where you say it and like immediately someone calls and you have a job, but it definitely will help the situation a lot more than in that I'm never going to get a job and being stuck in that negative vibration and pulling that negative energy into your system. So another thing you can do is practicing gratitude. Gratitude is not just being like thankful for the good stuff in your life, right? It's not just expressing thanks. It's not being like, well, thank you for my wonderful spouse and thank you for my amazing children. And I'm really thankful for, you know, this house and this roof I have over my head. That's not gratitude in the way that some people think of it. So we will discuss what it is in just a moment. But studies actually show that if you practice gratitude, which means being grateful for everything in your life, even the bad experiences, you can improve your thoughts, improve your stress levels, decrease your depression and anxiety, and overall positively affect your life for the better. So this is saying when we talked about that shitty situation earlier, that being grateful for what that shitty situation is going to teach you, what that situ sh shitty situation is going to bring into your life, and be grateful for the fact that it happened because it's allowing you to grow as a person mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And so it's just being grateful for that kind of stuff. I do a five minute gratitude practice every morning where I write down anywhere from three to five things that I am truly actually grateful for. And I have noticed in the past few years like a huge shift that even when a shitty situation does show up because they're bound to, then instead of me immediately falling into that negative vibe, oh my God, this sucks, it's never gonna change, life is miserable right now, and putting that out there, I'm able to more quickly say, okay, this situation truly sucks, and I really don't wanna be here right now, but I'm grateful for what it's going to bring to me. It's teaching me something, and I am grateful for what I'm going to learn from it, and that reframes everything for me. And it's literally turned things around like way faster than they might have otherwise and pulled us out of a bad situation. It's opened up my vibrational energy to be able to look for solutions and look for ways to turn that around instead of sitting there and moping and bemoaning the fact that I'm stuck here and there's nothing I can do about it. And like I said, the best part, it really only takes five minutes a day. It doesn't require hours and hours of anything, which I know in the busy lives that many, us, many of us leave, or many of us lead, that, you know, anything that's going to take hours and hours to do, we're just probably not going to incorporate it into our lives. So this is an easy one to incorporate because it literally takes five minutes a day. It's best to do it in the morning as it kind of reframes your vibrations for the whole day. But if mornings are super busy for you, afternoon or evenings before bed is just fine too. Meditation is a great one as well because it teaches you how to control your thoughts and not have your thoughts control you. And I know many people are like, oh my God, I can't do meditation. My brain is never silent. It doesn't shut off. This is impossible. The point of meditation contrary to what most people believe, is not to have a silent mind. It is not for your mind to be 100% completely silent and nothing enters it. It is actually to be able to, when a thought comes into your head, because it's going to happen, so it's not, it's not if, it's definitely when, to be able to acknowledge those thoughts that come into your head and then push them away and back out of that space so that you can be bad, back into a more positive vibration. So it just teaches you how to do that. And it can take practice. It's definitely a practice. It's a meditation practice for a reason. It takes practice. This is not something you're going to on your first like week of meditation kind of figure out. This takes you doing it daily for quite a while sometimes before this is truly something you can really do. But it's a good habit to get into and to continue trying to do a meditation practice daily as it will 
eventually you will see results. So if you're someone that finds yourself stuck in a negative anxiety induced thought pattern all the time, meditation can actually really help you break that cycle. Because as I said, it helps you kind of stop those thoughts, acknowledge that they exist, that whatever they're thinking about is, you know, a reality that's occurring around you and then get them out of your mind. Um, I find too that I can't always just like sit 100% still when doing meditation because I don't know, I have to move a lot. You see me, even during this presentation, I'm moving a lot. I have to talk with my hands. I have to move all over. Um, I'm sure my background on Zoom is having a hell of a time keeping up with me right now because I move constantly. But you don't have to do meditation where you're just sitting. One of my favorite meditations to do is um, called Transcendence. And it's this um, woman from the UK started this movement. And she literally, you go to her meditation, um, daily meditations that she has, and she turns on this like really loud, high vibration music. And you dance around however your body wants to move to whatever it is that she's saying that, you know, coming out, it's about, you know, let's focus on your arms right now. So you're going to move your arms more and things like that. Like it's great. And literally that is one of the best states of meditation I've ever gotten into where my brain actually stayed quite, I was able to move the thoughts out a lot faster. So my brain felt quieter than it usually does. So meditation is not requiring you to sit still and just hang out in a dead silent room, play music, lay down if that works better for you, dance around the room. You're not required to just sit and do that, especially if that's not something that you can do. <laughs> So trips and tricks to get us out of our negative vibrations and into a higher vibration. And like I said, it's okay to have a negative vibration. It's okay to have some negative thoughts because life does throw some really shitty stuff at us sometimes. And you're a human being. You're not going to always be perfectly reacting to everything that comes to you. And that's normal. That's fine. I don't expect you to be perfect hell I'm not perfect at all when it comes to this I do my best I practice it every day I go out of my way to reset my vibe when I can tell that it's going in the wrong direction but again I'm a human just like you and I'm not 100% perfect at this so please don't sit there and think that I'm coming out of coming at you from this place of perfection and I know better than you and I never fail because that's so not true so the first thing you want to do then is acknowledge where this thought is coming from. A lot of times when a negative thought shows up in your head, it's not literally you that's thinking it. It is a thought that has come from somebody else. It's something somebody else has said to your whole life, like something your parents always said to you. Like you get a new job and the first thought in your head is, oh God, what if I'm not good enough? That's not you thinking it influence that has put that into your head that you are not a good enough person at whatever. So is that something your parents always said? Is that something someone in your past said, an abusive ex, shitty friends? More than likely, that's what it is. And so you need to work on fixing that. So that's when you need to do some inner shadow work to help heal that wound and return those negative thoughts where they came from, back to the people that gave them to you. Um, I do work with clients on shadow work. So if this is something you're interested in, I'm not going into much detail today about what shadow work is and how it goes. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. I can do a whole thing on that too. Um, but it's something that is very, very important. And one of the main things that I work on with my clients and helping them get to wellness is working on their inner self, working on that inner child that has been beat down by their parents, potentially beat down by the world who wants to just stay inside and hide and doesn't want to fix anything. They don't want to change things. They like the status quo. And so that's something we can go into more depth later. But it's one of the first things that we work on is changing your mindset, changing your vibrations and working on your shadow work on the inside so that you can achieve true healing in your body. And then you want to try to replace that thought with a, not try, you want to succeed at replacing that thought with a reframed one. Let's put that out there. We're not trying, we're going to succeed. We are successful individuals in changing our vibrations. So let's say you're going through a really rough patch financially. If every time you look at your bank account and you go, oh, God, I'm just never going to have any money. You're never going to have any money. So let's change that. We can change it to, I am ready to receive the money I need to live the life I desire. 
That sounds good. If that resonates with you, use that one. Or you can use money comes from expected and unexpected places. I will receive money from the source. Use that one if it resonates with you. Make up one that resonates with you when it comes to reframing your thoughts. Put out there what you wish to get back. And I know this sounds silly at first, but we did learn words do matter. What you say matters, what you think matters. It truly, truly will change your life when you learn to reframe and get yourself back into a higher vibration. So then next, make sure you do your gratitude practice every day as this will start to help rewire your brain. Your brain will literally, the more you do it, rewire itself to head for those positive vibrations all of the time instead of heading for the negative one first. You're going to literally brainwash yourself into a better, more peaceful life. And I don't know a single person out there who would be like, oh, I don't want that. That's something you want. It is something you can achieve. So if you find yourself constantly in a negative loop, though, no matter what you've tried, you've tried all the tricks, and I'll be giving some more in a minute, look for external sources for this. Are you in a negative environment? Who have you surrounded yourself with? Are you surrounding yourself with happy people who send out positive vibrations? Or are you surrounded like I was with my family who's super negative about everything, no matter what it was, that would go looking for the negativity? Are you in an environment that is literally suppressing your ability to put out positive vibrations? If that's true, find a way to change your environment. You can't change those people. You can't change that situation all the time. All you can do is change you and you can change how you respond to that environment. Sometimes removing yourself is best. Sometimes kicking people out of your life is best. There is no room for toxic individuals in our lives, family or not. I just want to throw that out there. There is nothing wrong with cutting off people that are blood related to you. If they are toxic and they are negative and they are bringing you down, out they go. And if you listen to the news all day on repeat, turn it off. Please turn it off. The news is negative as fuck. I don't think there's a one thing that's positive about the news anymore. They thrive on that negativity. They thrive on fear mongering and they thrive on making you fearful and upset about everything. So turn it off. Don't listen to it anymore. You don't need it. So surround yourself then instead with the people that match the vibration you want. Turn off your negative outside influences curate your environment around you and soon you will notice your reality and your life changing for the better so you have to always be consciously aware of the vibrational energy around you being in a better vibrational environment will always ensure that you are able to see how to solve your problems easier and when you're surrounded by the negative it's really hard to get into that mindset to help you see how to solve that problem in that case if you're stuck in an environment like that and you're having trouble seeing a way out or solutions reach out to me reach out to the group my facebook group if you're in it um, if you're not you can come find us it's called the sisterhood holistic health and support or something like that i forget <laughs> i forget my own name on my facebook group i'm sorry um but come to that get some support through there Find somebody who's in a better vibrational state than you are currently who can help you find solutions to get out of that situation and into a state that you want to be in. So what else can you do? Turn on some music. Music can easily change your vibration from negative to positive in like literally a matter of seconds. If you ever been in like a really terrible mood or you're like really feeling sad about something and you just go turn on like your favorite song? And instantly your mood is like lifted and gone. You go from like really sad or really upset or really pissed off to like instantly happy and cheerful and whatever. You have literally just changed your vibrational pattern. Music is absolutely amazing for this. Um, obviously, you have to pick the right type of music. You can't go out there and pick the really like harsh music that has a lot of like negativity in it because that'll just bring that negativity back to you so high vibrational music music that always makes you happy that's the kind you want to be you want to be playing play it all the time keep it on low in your office at work keep it on low in your home just have that music on and it will literally just really keep your mood so much better get out in nature go for a walk <laughs> get out in nature is so important you are a part of nature and nature is a part of us and when we disconnect ourselves from it by living super busy lives living in cities that don't have a lot of green spaces and then not going to the green spaces they do have often enough we literally decrease our 
high vibrational patterns and start moving into a low vibrational state. Our bodies are connected to the cycles of nature and we're cyclical beings. And so you can sometimes feel that cycle of your energy. And that's because you're following the cycle of the earth, the cycle of the moon, the cycle of seasons and nature. And when you feel those low moods are coming, one of the best ways to fix it is to get out into nature and help reconnect your soul and your spirit to the vibrations that nature puts out. So go sit in your favorite spot or stand or walk, whatever works, and close your eyes. Don't close your eyes and walk, please. <laughs> close your eyes and listen to all the sounds around you. Listen for those vibrations, those birds singing, the wind blowing, the trees creaking. Sit there and just feel those vibrations coming to you. Sit up against a tree and feel the vibrations of the tree as the wind blows. Feel the vibrations of the grass as the wind blows. Breathe it in, in through your nose, out through your mouth. And just sit and connect. Learn to feel those vibrations that you can't see, and that you can't hear, and feel the ones that you can. And this will help reset your nervous system back into a state of calm and not a state of upset. Nature is so, so, so important, and you need to make time to get out into nature. Another good way is podcast or an audiobook. Um, a favorite podcast or your favorite audiobook can really help flip your vibrational energy. So surround yourself with high vibrational information throughout the day, and this will help keep your vibrations high as well. So listen to those podcasts that always cheer you up. Listen to that audiobook that makes you laugh. Whatever one works best for you, do that. That high vibration information coming into your body will help reset your vibrational energy as well. Because energy flows into and out of you. So when energy flows in, it has no form. It's just literally energy. That's it. And then your thoughts give it a form and create its vibrations. So if you keep your vibrational energy high, then your thoughts will form high level vibrations that are positive and that will create positivity and positive thoughts in your life. If you're staying in a low vibration state with negative thoughts all the time, then the thoughts, the energy that flows in, your thoughts will create it into a negative energy and that's what it will turn into. It'll turn into a negative vibration and you'll just keep repeating that pattern. So work hard to keep your vibrational energy high and pretty soon you will find the life that you want is literally right in front of you. So in conclusion, energy is everything. Everything is energy. You vibrate at a certain frequency and so do your thoughts. So do all the people around you, so does nature. Finding the people that vibe on the same level and the same frequency as you will help keep your energy and your frequencies high and keep you in that vibration that you want. So learn to change that frequency when it becomes one you don't care for and you will change your life and in turn all the reality around you and you will get the life that you want. So that is the end. I will have a free gift for you. I'm gonna stick it in the comments so you can download it. Um, to night if you want. I really do appreciate you all coming. Let me see if I have it in here. Oop. I will have it on, hang on. We'll stop sharing that. All right, and I will put it in the comments here for you. I have to do it on my computer. There we go. And then let me pop into Facebook and do it there for you guys. So that's where you can go and download your free gift as a thank you for coming and spending all this time with me and listening to me ramble about all my stuff that I love. <laughs> so now we have some time for questions. So if anybody has any questions, now is the time to ask them. We have about 20 minutes left before the hour I planned is up. So we have a good bit of time to get some things answered if you want. All 
All right. Well, if no one has any questions, which, oh, there you are. You have been stuck in, super stuck in a negative thought loop, Jenny. Any, want to know any big time tips? Do you have a situation going on currently that is not super positive that might be keeping you stuck in this negative loop? You can come on if you want. Can I unmute you? Can you unmute you? And we can talk if that's easier than typing. Yes, I'm terrible at typing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I mean, I am too. I'd much prefer to just like say it. So what's been right. going on that's keeping you stuck in this? Do you, can you see any like outside influences? I, I have multiple, I have multiple situations that are going on on a regular basis. Um, mm -hmm lost a lot of family members in the last few years um yeah a few most of them kind of traumatically uh yeah i've been dealing with my own physical and mental health issues um i i tried taking an antidepressant in january and okay. had a really really bad reaction mm, I'm sorry. Um, which was in the middle of losing my father-in-law and his service and um and it it just seems like I don't ever get a chance to recuperate from yep. all these big time things um but I'm I'm looking for I'm looking for opportunities so I'm hopeful but um I've I've had a hard time kind of bringing myself out of it yeah, and that's understandable because it seems like as soon as one thing starts resolving, another one comes crashing right back down, it sounds like, which makes it really hard to, you know, change your thoughts when you're just starting to get back into your habits and then something else comes and knocks you down again. That is, that is it. So what have you tried so far? What are your normal go-tos and are they working? Um, well, I'm a tapping practitioner and that helps. Mm -hmm. I have okay. exercises that I do with that, and that helps. Um, I, I, honestly, I, it's like, oh, if I had, you know, three months on a tropical, you know, paradise island, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> then I could pro yes. I'd probably be just fine. Um, mm -hmm. I hear it, that. It's 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 like I I'm doing I'm doing all I'm doing a lot of the things, um, but okay. it's just getting to the point of going, getting healed up, getting to neutral and then going past to positive. I don't, yeah. it's like, I don't, I, I haven't been able to get there yet. For sure. I can totally understand that. Um, I will let you in on a secret. My life has been like absolutely super shitty for the past like three months. Mm -hmm. I was in the same thing as you. Every time we finally felt like we were getting forward in something, something else would hit it, hit me and like knock me backwards. And it has been a really miserable three months. <laughs> um, it is finally, I've seen some light at the end of the tunnel and um, it's definitely not been easy, but um, I'm coming out of it and I'm getting myself back into the vibrations that I want, which is kind of why I wanted to do this because I want, I know there's other people out there like you and I that are suffering. So one of the best things you can do, and this is a slow one, but start that gratitude practice back up. If you have it before and you've stopped, um, restart it. If you haven't done it before, um, definitely pick it up. Um, the free gift that I gave you is actually a five minute gratitude journal that I made up that I use for myself okay. and that I love. Um, so print off as many copies as you need and start doing that. This one's not super fast. I will tell you that it's not going to be like you start doing it today and by tomorrow you feel better but it will slowly get you there as it'll slowly change your mindset into looking at the situations you've been in, in a more positive light, as hard as that may seem. Yeah. I've been there myself recently. So I understand that that seems right now because you're in the thick of it. It seems impossible. I'm here to tell you it is not impossible. It is hard, but it is not impossible and you will get there. Um, definitely start listening to music every day. Like just leave it playing 24 seven. Um, sound bowls are really good for this because they can really change that vibrational one so find ones um you can youtube has a ton of them but find like videos or um downloads whatever on whatever uh 
listening app you listen to for you use for music um, that are ones that are high vibration ones and okay. those will really help as well start doing that every day start your morning off with it don't and end your evening with it another one too that's really good is to get outside in the morning sunlight morning sunlight raises your dopamine levels and morning sunlight helps your brain activate and it helps keep your circadian rhythm on track. All of these things will help get you back into a high vibration when you're tired because you're not sleeping well, when your dopamine levels are low because everything is going on and again, you're not sleeping well, which decreases your dopamine levels. Um, if you have any kind of neurodiversity that causes low dopamine levels, you're already at a disadvantage. So yeah. definitely yeah. make sure that you are getting out there in the mornings take a five or 10 minute walk. You do not have to jog. You do not have to run ever. You don't have to go spend 45 minutes in a gym anywhere. You need to just go walk around the block. Take the slowest walk you have ever gone on in your life. Stop to look at all the flowers and appreciate the beauty of nature around you. Say hi to your neighbors. If you live in a neighborhood where people live closer to you than I do, my closest neighbor is like five miles away. Mm -hmm. um, so I would never, ever walk to their house. <laughs> um, <laughs> But stop and see things. Pick up little stones that you see that call out to you that make you happy. Pick flowers if you're in a place where it's, you know, able to do so. Don't steal people's flowers. But, <laughs> you know, do that kind of stuff. Take stuff. Take a moment as you're walking to be grateful for what you're seeing. Take, make sure that when you're doing this, you're breathing through your nose, inhaling through your nose. Don't walk and breathe through your mouth. This decreases your vibrational energy. Huh? Increase it by making sure you're always breathing through your nose. Okay. If... If your sleep has been poor, which it sounds like that might be a possibility just because of everything you're going through, um, start taking magnesium glyconate at night. Okay. You want to take it about an hour or two before bed. If you are, let's see, if you're not sure where you're falling on the how much magnesium I have currently in my body scale, start at a lower dose and work your way up. I suggest nothing lower than 400 milligrams for you. Okay. So it's magnesium glyconate. Sometimes it's also called chelated magnesium. It's a more bioavailable form. So you absorb more of it. And it's also one that is known to be calming to your nervous system and um, calming to your heart and calming your adrenals from racing and injecting cortisol into your blood, which also keeps your vibrations low. When you're in that stressful fight and flight state, your cortisol is high. It decreases your dopamine because Dopamine is one of the um, neurotransmitters that is needed to produce norepinephrine and epinephrine, which is what's going through your system when your cortisol is high and you're in that flight and flight, fight and flight response, right? So increasing your dopamine will help with that because it'll help your body handle the stress better when you have proper levels of dopamine and you're not depleting those and you're not increasing your epinephrine. Um, levels at the same time. So magnesium helps with this because it helps calm all of that down. It helps your body deal with the stress. If you're feeling really fatigued and burned out from all of this, add some vitamin B5, which is called pantothenic acid into there. And you're going to want to take about 100 milligrams of that. Taking magnesium and B5 together helps support your adrenals and help bring your cortisol levels down, which helps you be able to pick your vibrations up. So you're going to want to do that. If you're open to some herbs to try, um, reishi mushrooms are really, really good for this. I suggest taking it as a tea and not as a capsule, um, as it works better that way and you absorb more of it. And skullcap or lemon balm are really good for this as well. They're very calming to your nervous system. They're very calming to your brain. They help raise your dopamine levels and they really just get you back into that parasympathetic state where you want to be. And so that can really help also get you back into a vibrational energy that you want to be in. Um, those are ones that um, I don't think you can usually buy them as like individual teas from places. Um, so you might want to buy some like bulk herbs and make them in a tea. You'd want to do about one to two teaspoons of the dried herb to about eight ounces or 240 milliliters of the of boiled water. Cover and steep for 20 to 30 minutes. You want it to be a very strong, powerful tea because you're using it in a medicinal way and not just, a, you know, I'm having a herbal tea today. So those two are very, very good to try and use for this as well. Do a cup in the morning when you wake up and a cup at night before you go to bed. 
You can do a cup in the afternoon too if you have time. I find many people, if they're at work, it's hard to make a cup of tea. So if you leave the house for work, that might not be possible. If you stay home for work, make yourself a cup in the afternoon as well. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. I, um, yeah. I've had take a walk in the morning on my, my list of things to do, but I keep putting it off and now I will, I will make it yes. part of my, part of my uh, medicinal journey is to get out and, and do my morning yes. walk. And this uh, is where, yes, a mindset change is required, right? You need to change your mindset that I am a person who takes a morning walk because this is what's going to get me to the goal that I want. Right. Mm -hmm. So change your mindset and you will start doing that every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll make it a priority. Yes, your health should never be on the back burner, ever. Your health should always be the top priority before everything else, no matter how selfish that sounds or really is, because you only have one life, you only have one body, and you're not going to get a second one. So take care of you. Everything else will fall into place around you. You are important. Thank you. I, I needed to hear that. I have not made myself a priority. And I'm yes. changing and that, that now. I'm changing that now anyway, but it's good to get encouragement. For sure. For sure. I've had a lot of encouragement from friends and stuff lately as we've been going, like I said, through literal hell over here, it seemed. And it was super useful and helpful to have that. So go find yourself one of your good friends that always puts you in a good mood when you talk to them and reach out to them. If they're as good of a friend as you think they are, they're not going to diss on you for feeling like this. They're not going to hate on you or do anything. They're going to actually help raise that vibration. So reach out to people too. get that support system going. That's super important. Um, And then I am always open. Message me, call me, um, sign up to do a consultation where we can go really more into depth on what's going on. Um, That can really help too whatever works for you, um, because you are important. And this is something that you need to, you know, put first in your life for a little while. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, you are very welcome. I will put my email address into the chat here. So if you want to reach out that way, you have it to do so. Fantastic. I will get in touch. Anybody else have any questions? I see Vanessa and Wendy are here. Welcome. And I guess um, almost goodbye now. (laughs) It was lovely having you guys here. I'm super excited that you came. All right. I'm streaming live to Facebook and it's a little... uh, a little uh, behind (laughs) from what zoom is so got to give them a moment to catch up and see if they have any questions and if not then i will let you all go and uh, we will see you next time um as a fyi since we're on here already on august 16th same time 5 p.m i will be doing a five simple ways to raise your dopamine levels without medications um, that will be absolutely wonderful for also kind of helping with this stuff. So um, the information, if you're on my newsletter, will be going out tomorrow about that. So you can sign up for it um, and get reminders. All right. going to give it a second to catch up on Facebook and see. All right, I am not seeing any thing come through. So I thank you all for a lovely evening. Thank you for coming and attending and listening to me ramble. And I will hopefully see you at the dopamine training. Um, Again, like I said, if you're on my newsletter, the information for that is coming out tomorrow and the registration. So you can sign up and get reminders and we will be able to uh, see you there. Um, In the meantime, if you're not part of the Facebook group, please come join. I have lots of tips and tricks in there for things and I go live a lot just randomly um, because 
you know, ADHD brain every once in a while. I'm like, oh, I should go say that. So I just go make a live instead of typing anything out. So <laughs> y'all have a good evening. And um, I hope that you get back to your high vibration soon. And I will see you guys later. Bye.